There are many sorts of applications where multiple threads might need to share a resource, and you'll need to synchronize these threads so that only one thread at a time has access to that resource. I'll demonstrate how to do this in the project Sync Threads. I'm starting with an empty main class and with a custom thread class that extends thread. In this version of my thread, I'm sleeping for two seconds, but that's it. I'm not outputting anything to the screen quite yet. In order to demonstrate synchronization, first I'm going to create a class that can be used as a target object. You can use any Java object for this purpose, but I'm going to create a very simple class. I'll right-click on my existing package and create a new class, and I'll name it Target Class. Now again, you can use any Java object, including, say, a stream that's pointing to a file or a network connection but I'll just use the simplest sort of object. I'll click Finish, and then I'll implement a single method. I'll set it as public and void, and I'll name the method call, and I'll have it receive an integer argument called thread ID. Within the call method, I'll do some system out, and I'll output the string calling thread from, and I'll append thread ID. And that's it for this very simple Java class. It has a single public method that outputs a string combined with an integer argument. Now I'll go to my custom thread, and I'll show you how to use a single object to synchronize multiple instances of this thread. Within the class definition, I'll define a couple of private fields. The first will be an integer of thread ID, and the second will be an instance of that target class. and I'll name it target. Now, as this thread class is instantiated, I'll ask the main application to set these values. I'll create a new public constructor. I'll name it the same as the class name, as usual. And the public constructor method will receive two arguments. Once again, an integer named thread ID, and an instance of target class that I'll once again name target. Within the constructor method, I'll pass that value and reference to the private fields with this.threadID equals threadID and this.target equals target. So now, as this class is instantiated, the integer threadID and the target class target will be passed in and they'll be saved as private fields of the object. Now I'm ready for synchronization within the thread. In order to synchronize, you set up a code block that uses the keyword synchronized, and you pass in a target object, like this. I'll move the cursor above this try catch block, and I'll type synchronized, and I'll pass in the target object. And this is the target object that's being stored as a private field of this class. I'll create a code block, and then I'll take this try catch block and I'll move it up into the code block. After the try catch is executed and we've waited two seconds, I'll call the method of the target object with target.call and I'll pass in the thread ID. So here's what I'm up to. I'm going to be creating a few instances of this thread class and I'm going to try to run them all at the same time. But I've placed this code inside a synchronized block and I've referenced a target object. I'm going to be passing in the same target object into all three thread objects. And because I'm synchronizing on that object, only one of the threads will be able to execute this call method at a time. If I didn't synchronize, they'd all execute pretty much at the same time. But I've told them to go at two second intervals. Now I'm ready for my main process code. I'll go back to main.java, place the cursor inside the main method, and I'll create an instance of the MyThread class that I'll name T1. I'll instantiate MyThread, and I'll pass in the value 1 as the thread ID, and now I need a target object. I'll place the cursor above that code, and I'll create a new object data typed as target class and named target, and I'll instantiate it with new target class, the constructor method. 
Now I'm ready to finish the constructor call, and I'll pass in the target object. I missed the new keyword, so I'll go back and fill it in. And now I have good code that creates a single instance of the threat. I'll duplicate that line a couple of times, and then I'll change the variable names to make them distinct, and I'll also change the thread IDs that I'm passing in. So now I have three instances of the custom thread, and I'm ready to launch all of them. I'll call t1.start, t2.start, and t3.start. And that's all the code. Now, here's an important thing. Notice that I'm creating a single instance of the target object, and I'm passing that same reference into all three thread objects. So when we get into the thread synchronization, they're all examining the same target object to synchronize on. Because all three classes are using the same target object, and it's important that they be exactly the same reference, only one of those objects will be able to execute the synchronized code at a time. And because I have the sleep command in there, the other two will have to wait, and they'll go at two second intervals. I'll go back to my main class and run the application. And I'll see thread from one, thread from three, and then thread from two. Right now, I don't have enough code in there to guarantee the order in which they'll be executed. Instead, all I've said is to synchronize their execution so only one goes at a time. And it's up to the virtual machine to figure out and decide which one will go first. The important thing here is that I prevented these objects from using the shared resource simultaneously. I've designed the application so that only one can go through the synchronized code at a time and the others have to wait. And in this way, I'll prevent problems from creeping into my application that otherwise might occur from trying to share a resource that cannot be shared.